Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to let you inside my mind to show you how I'm able to win games in both ranked and tournaments consistently. If you apply everything you learn in this video, not only will you start winning more games yourself, but you will also start placing higher in tournaments. Before we start, I want to thank Ansar for leaving a positive comment on the last video. I read every single comment, so if you do want to be featured, drop a comment down below. Let's see if we can hit 200 likes on this video as we hit that on the last one. Now jumping straight into the video, I'm going to be covering a game from the Solo Victory Cup Opens, which I won with a good amount of elims. So starting off, I want to take you through the early game section of this game. Now I'm landing Reckless Railways as this is a common location which I drop in solos. Immediately, you always want to prioritise just looking to land on a gun, and then scouting out where the opponents have landed around you. As you can see I noticed that player on top of the station which gives me information for where he's going to be so I can loot safely. Now I'm following my exact same loot route which I go to every single game which involves going to this underground bunker where I'm guaranteed these three god chests which then allows me to try and build a basic loadout. Every single game I'm looking for at least an AR and shotgun before I look to get involved and get outside towards fighting other players around the drop. From there I then rotate up to these slurp barrels which are crucial as this is guaranteed shield. Once I've made sure that I've got my base load out and shield my then next focus turns to mats now the reason why is because mats are crucial in off spawn fights and making sure you stay alive what you want to do is locate some fast farming mats like I do here with these trees as this then allows me to get my mat counter up very very quickly and I know that these trees are the fastest to farm or the most mat efficient that you can farm in a quick period of time this will then allow me to gain the materials advantage over other players at my drop from there I then rotate south side out of reckless railways and towards the bunker which is just below this metal place here as you guys can see I have a structured mid game which I follow every single time so let's get into some engagements which we do in our mid game okay so let's focus on the very first engagement of this game which happens when I'm going for the bunker and let's break down exactly why we are able to successfully win this fight so obviously I get some engagement early damage on this player and then he boxes up here you can see I'm taking very right hand peaks when approaching this guy in his box and dropping down onto his wall again constantly taking safe peaks so that I'm protected when he goes to shoot me and that allows me to get a crack on the opponent however at this moment I notice a third party player rule rocking up sorry now one of the rules I always have is let the other two players f uh, fight first or try and get the other two players to fight before you fight indeed now the reason why is because this then gives you a higher chance of being successful in the fight however as you guys can see i spot that the third part is sitting high on high ground so i get some opening damage and with a nice cone we're able to get some more damage on him this then means that i can play much more confident on this player as i know he's kind of anxious due to the fact that i've approached him with some good piece control and got some damage onto him from there i'm basically trying to force pressure onto this player so both of them end up fighting each other which is exactly what happens as you can see both players go down and get into an engagement this then allows me to simply momentum phase through and clean up the fight easily sorting out that situation where there was three players and we win comfortably taking minimal damage from there i can then get my mid-game objective which is securing the bunker loot which is so good this season and we can then rotate into zone a very smart fight which sets us up with good loot so after leaving that bunker i want you guys to take notice of the fact that i've rotated heavy dead side in the next zone and this is where we get into our next engagement of the game so I spot this player very far out into the water. Now the reason I decide to push this engagement is because it's an isolated fight. Due to the fact we're on dead side and in the water, this fight is very, very unlikely to get third partied. And I notice that this player isn't the best. After getting some opening damage, I immediately crack him with the shotgun and then just try to keep pressure on him. I notice this player beginning to panic and therefore I just like to take advantage by grabbing his roof and quickly putting him out of the lobby. Again, this gets me some extra points in the tournament and just helps refresh my mats and also gives me a flow brief fizz, which is crucial, which we'll use later. Now here is where we first use the Flowberry Fizz. As you guys can see, we get a pretty far pull, which is why we use the Fizz immediately to try and rotate in. However, as often happens on these rotates, we get beamed in the back and crack down to around about 70 HP. Now immediately here, you want to try and box in hard mats, making sure you're not boxing in wood, as this means you're less likely to get focused. As you guys can see, I create lots of space so I can effectively heal up because it's important that we have decent health. However, with the flow brief is, I don't use it to get to 100 shield as the flow brief is, is our crucial use of rotation. From there, I rotate perfectly at the right time, completely and utterly white lining the rotate to make sure we're getting in. From here, the main thing I also want to talk to you guys about is making sure you aren't bo uh, boxed on the very lowest layer and we box one up, therefore allowing us to get into the zone safely. So now on to our next rotate, we again pull up our zone. Now something crucial about rotating is you don't want to be the first or last person to rotate. 
this is because, as you guys can see, I focus other people that are in front of me, and obviously they're going to focus me. But if you go out the middle, you can see that we're not really getting focused from other players around in the lobby. Yes, we have to stop and box up here, and when this try does try to get in on our wall, we want to make sure that we elevate our layer here. The reason why is because most of the people are shambles on low ground, and therefore looking for an impact frag, I call it, where they're looking to get their mats and resources back from someone else they kill. So by simply elevating, we therefore get ourselves away from them players. Then again, we do the stop and fish strategy, and we use our flow briefers again to rotate further in this zone. However, things do get a little bit scuffed, and I end up getting full pieced. From here, we don't want to take a fight because we're not fully in the zone. We want to fully focus on getting into zone. Now, my focus is always to take height, no matter my material count. As you guys can see, I only have around 500 mats, but I'm going to talk you through exactly how we make that work in this end game. So now we are on height, and even though we don't have the most amount of max, this is something I always like to be, as it allows you to get deeper into these end games, so long as you look for your refreshes safely. As you guys can see, I'm making sure that I'm tarping across only in wood, because I know that there's a high likelihood we get shot out. As well, whilst we have low max, it's pretty easy to know that you can't double up, because we're on a low max count here. Now I'm looking to apply pressure to everyone that's rotating in on the back side of zone, so I can try and identify a refresh, and that's exactly what I managed to do successfully. As you guys can see, this Travis Scott player is rotating in and once I realize he's white I know that I don't have very many mats sorry and that I need to get in on this kill. Right now I have about 10 builds so I know that I'm not going to be able to hold high ground so we managed to piece up this player and get him with our SMG. This refreshes our mat counter a little bit and we're able to also refresh our loot meaning we can go back to high ground knowing we have around about 25 builds. So immediately once we retake high ground, I notice that I only have around 200 mats. Now this is where I'm able to capitalize on the scenario and actually win this game, because 200 mats isn't enough, so how do I turn this game into a win? It's all through looking for smart refreshes, and this is exactly what I'm trying to teach you guys. So as you can see, I'm starting to look to focus the players on second height. This is because they are often the players in the lobby which have the most mats, which therefore pose the biggest threat to you as a player on high ground, especially when I only have around about 15 builds remaining. We get some damage on both players that are looking around second height and therefore this is where I start to look for a refresh. As you guys can see by my map counter I only have four builds so I fully make sure all my guns are reloaded before perfectly timing a momentum phase in which you guys will see. This is where I'm forced to make a play because I only have two builds. I perfectly time my jump with the sprint jump because this allows you to jump higher and therefore I momentum phasing into this player's box. Yes we missed the shotgun shot but we're able to pick him up due to the surprise element of us jumping in through the roof. Then from here I again have around that 200 map marker. Now I know there's only a few zones left so immediately my focus switches on to just trying to apply pressure to those people on low ground to make everyone else's games harder. I'm very much of the idea that whilst you're on height you should be constantly spraying down with all your guns just to make everyone else's games more difficult. And you guys can see again me look to fight the players that are the most stacked in the lobby as these guys are going to cause us the most problems when going for the win. Now we're out of mats I stay on an elevated layer here not dropping down because I can see that the zone is going up a mountain. Being on height gives us the biggest advantage because we only have to look down. I try to get in on this player but again can't so I choose to elevate myself back up as this is the smartest position to be in the lobby. From there I'm then looking for the other two players to fight which then leaves me in the most advantageous position in the 1v1 scenario. Now, exactly that does happen, as you can see, the player below me healing, again we're staying on an elevated layer, and these two end up getting into a fight on the back side of zone. But the whole reason which we're able to stay alive for the longest here, despite having zero mats, is because we are on the high ground. Exactly what I said, you don't need infinite mats, you just have to play high. From there, the other player uh, takes down, leaving a 1v1 scenario, and we're able to catch the guy as he's coming out of zone and kill him. Very, very easy way to get a win there, which qualified us, or ended up qualifying us to the finals of this solo victory cup, where we then had a chance the earnings. But as you guys can see, just by taking height, you can easily capitalize on the situation despite not having that many mats. It's all just about how you look for refreshes with a smart playstyle. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, make sure you've dropped a like and subscribed and feel free to check out our Twitch streams while we stream all of this live. Peace out and I'll see you guys in the next video.